Hello and welcome to yet another presentation on modern and postmodern literatures. Today we'll be reviewing one of the critical tools of the course, Fanon's The Negro and Psychopathology. I have devised an outline for the presentation, which roughly consists of an introduction, a quick recap of Fanon's life, the summary and analysis of his work Black Skin White Masks, its reception, and legacy. Now, in order to understand Fanon's take on colonialism and racism, we must first take a look at his life and work. Franz Fanon was born on the 20th of July 1925 in Fort de France on the island of Martinique, located in the Antilles, belonging to France. He is most notably known as a black intellectual, political radical, pan-Africanist and Marxist humanist who has greatly contributed to the development of cultural studies. In his works he most often dealt with the psychopathological effects of colonization and colonized peoples and the human, social and cultural consequences of decolonization. Coming from a line of African slaves, indentured Indians, Afro-Martinicians and white Alsatians, his views on race, racism and colonization were a result of his many encounters with oppression by white people. In his teenage years, the island of Martinique was occupied by Vichy French naval troops, who after having established a collaborationist Vichy regime oppressed and abused the locals. Fanon described them as individuals who have taken off their masks and in the process became authentic racists. He left the country as a dissident, traveling to Dominica in order to enlist into the Free French Forces, from where he had been deployed to Europe and fought in France. During the war, Fanon became exposed to more white racism, an example of which was that French women liberated by black soldiers would rather dance with Italian prisoners of war than their liberators. With the Nazis defeated and Allied forces crossing the Rhine into Germany, accompanied by journalists and photographers, Fanon's regiment was bleached, which meant that all black military personnel were transferred to Normandy, where they would await repatriation. He returned to Martinique and stayed long enough to complete his BA before moving to France, where he attended the University of Lyon. In France, he wrote and published his first book, Black Skin, White Masks, in 1952, which he intended to submit to the university as a doctoral dissertation, with no success. In the book, Fanon describes the unfair treatment of black people in France, who also had a sense of inferiority when facing white people. Fanon believed that even though a black person could speak French, they could not fully integrate into the life and environment of Caucasians. In his most cited work, The Wretched of the Earth, published after his death in 1961, we can see Fanon expressing more radical ideas, as he argues that colonial people are entitled to resort to violence in order to free themselves from their oppressors. But let's stick to black skin white masks for now. Chapter 6 of Black Skin White Masks is one of, if not the most quoted chapter of Fanon's work, since it provides a clear explanation of how racism and colonialism affect the psyche of black people. Just to clear things up in terms of terminology, pathology refers to an abnormality or disease, psychopathology is thus a disturbance in a person's psychological makeup or their reception of self in the world around them. In the chapter, Fanon focuses mainly on the relationship between black people and the different cultural representations of blackness. He does so by analyzing the cultural stories children of color are exposed to in a society ruled by Caucasians. Fanon argues that every culture has stories about heroes, which in the case of white colonial nations are of course white. Black children naturally read these stories too and associate themselves with said hero only to later discover that they're black. And as the bad guys in these stories are generally black savages, these very same children realize that they were not the hero but the villain all along, which results in them experiencing a psychological disturbance at a very young age. In order to further elaborate this point, I'm going to show you a cinematized speech given by black rights activist Kwame Touré, where he articulates the very same points Fanon focuses on in his book. I advise you to pay attention to the lines provided on this slide, in particular as I'm going to be referring to them later on as the presentation progresses. Thank you, Sister Patrice, the Black Student Union. I want to thank all of you, my beloved sisters and brothers, for coming out tonight. But I'm here tonight to tell you that it is time for you to stop running away from being black. It is time for you to stop running away from being black. You're college students, right? Right on. You should think. It is time for you to understand that you, as the growing intellectuals of this country, that you must define beauty for black people. Okay. Now that's black power. 
ask you something. Is beauty defined as someone with a narrow nose? Thin lips? White skin? Mm -mm. Hell no. Hell no. Because you ain't got none of that. Okay. Our lips are thick. Yes, they are. Our nose is broad. Our hair is nappy. Yes. We are black and we are beautiful. Yes. You see, we want to be so much like the white people who oppress us in this country. And because they hate us, and because we are ashamed of our African heritage, we then hate ourselves. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me tonight. <laughs> Y'all dig Tarzan? Tarzan, I'm gonna be honest. When I was a boy, I used to go to the Saturday matinees and watch Tarzan all the time. And white Tarzan used to beat up the black natives. And I would sit there yelling, kill the beast. Kill the savages. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. But what I was saying was, kill me. It was as if a young Jewish boy saw Nazis taking Jews off to concentration camps and cheered them on. Today, I want those chiefs to beat the hell out of Tarzan and send his lily white ass on back to the caves of Europe. Right on. Right on. But it takes time. It takes time to become free of the lies and their shaming effects on the black mind. It takes time to reject the most important lie that black people can't do the same things that white people do unless a white person helps them. As there are no representations of black heroes, the black person having identified with the white hero now aspires to become white too, and as a result they lose a sense of self. In the light of all this, it is safe to assume that the underlying question in Fanon's black skin white masks is, if black people aren't depicted as heroes, how are they depicted? White people define blackness as otherness, through antagonization of sad people in stories. They are depicted as beasts, savages, or the devil itself, which rationalizes the stigma that they are animalistic, irrational, and dominated by their physical desires. These differences put black people in subhuman position within a human society. Which brings us to the over-sexualization of black people in particular. In a bipolar white society, whiteness has always been interlinked with the mind, whereas blackness has been reduced to symbolize the body and the biological. In a white culture, black men are reduced to their penises, and are considered nothing more than walking genitals. According to Fanon, black people and Jews in European society are both seen as evil and a threat, albeit on different levels. An anti-Semite wants to rid the world of Jewish schemers and merchants, while a racist wants to protect white women from getting raped by black men. A racist mind therefore fantasizes about castrating said men in order to eliminate a sexual threat to society. Whiteness is also heavily associated with beauty. This is reflected upon in Thoreau's speech from earlier, and as white people set the standards for beauty in colonial societies, black people are according to these very same standards considered ugly and undesirable. Now let's get into the analysis of chapter 6. In everyday life, families are considered to be units of love and protection, but Fanon approaches it from a different perspective. He argues that the family is a miniature depiction of society, thus being an instrument of power and racism, stating that a white child growing up in a normally functioning white family will grow up to be normal, and on the other hand, if a black child grows up in a normal black family, they will become abnormal as soon as they encounter white society. When the Negro makes contact with the white world, a certain sensitizing action takes place. If his psychic structure is weak, one observes a collapse of the ego. The black man stops behaving as an actual person. Fanon argues that contact alone is enough to invoke anxiety. He also argues for the possibility of a collective unconscious in black people, in which the conflict between the white master and the black slave is submerged. Meaning that black people who have never experienced slavery can still be psychologically damaged by the legacy of it. Fanon hypothesizes that collective catharsis could be the solution to these traumas, as all societies have their way of expressing anger. Black children are unable to do so, as cartoons are usually aimed at white children and contain racist imagery. As a result of this, black children are forced to identify themselves with the white hero, which leads to alienation from their own kind and self-hatred. 
With the internalization of the conflicts caused by this, black children grow up feeling subhuman. The other matter Fanon is addressing in this chapter is the over-sexualization of black people and their otherness, where anti-Semitism is based on the fear of Jewish people's supposed ability to take over institutions of power, anti-black racism is rooted in the fear of black people's sexuality. White men are famously paranoid about black men's sexual virility. Even though this idea is obviously false, it remains powerful because it is irrational. Fanon gives the example of the fact that anti-Semites do not castrate Jewish people, rather castration is an act of violence used on black people specifically due to the sexual nature of anti-black racism. As already stated, racism leads white people to associate black people with beasts, biology, the body and the devil. They circulate absurd stories to further solidify these racist stereotypes. Fanon mentions having heard from a sex worker about a white woman who had sex with a black man and lost her mind as a result. Fanon also mentions the stereotype that white women who have slept with black men lose interest in men of their own race. Again, such stories and stereotypes are irrational, yet deeply powerful. To bring a better understanding of how black people are mistreated, I brought you a clip from the movie Straight Outta Compton, where a black police officer represents the black man trying to be white, thinking of himself as superior to the people he harasses due to him being in a place of power, with the Caucasian police officer symbolizing the establishment or the man. You guys lost? You niggas supposed to be somewhere? Yeah, here, we working. Oh, you working? Yeah, I bet. What we do? We'll find out in a minute what you did. Hey, shut the fuck up. The Get fuck? your ass on the ground now. Get on the ground. On the ground? What you supposed to do with this? On the ground. What we do? Hey. Get down. Get on the ground now. Get your punk ass on the ground. Let's go. The fuck down. Hands behind your back, interlock your fingers. Yeah. This is fucked up. Interlock them. Oh, Fuck, you got us on the ground like this for an officer? For our protection, I... 70 of you and four of us. So sit tight and let us do our job. Hey, officer, I'm sorry. What is going Sir? on out? Can you stay right there, please? We're trying to check these bangers, make sure they're clean. All right, I'm sorry. These are not bangers, OK? These, um, these are artists. Excuse me, artists? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What kind of artists? Rappers, and they're working with me in the studio right now. Well, see, rap is not an art. And I'm sorry, who are you? I'm the manager. Well, you're wasting your time, Mr. Manager. You gotta be kidding me. You're wasting your time. Really? These, these clients of yours, these yeah. rappers, yeah. they look like gang members. You can't come down here and arrest people just because of what they look like. Are you crazy? Ow, ow. But that's police harassment. You said you're a manager, right? Yeah. Not a fucking lawyer. Does that matter? You cannot come down here and harass these guys because they're black. Oh, People step have back. rights. Step, step back. Right, step back. I'll step back. You let them up. Get up, guys. Mm. Come on. Eric. You don't tell them get to up. get up. I'm stepping we back. We will decide that. You have no idea. The people I know. I'm going to call the mayor's office. Step back. Now get up. Get up, now. Okay. And Come you on, keep guys. your people in line, you yep. understand? And the uh -huh. fuck out of Torrance. Good. Come on. You got a problem? Sorry. This is my jersey. You ain't tough Some now. Jokes, huh? Just get to step. Okay. Eric? Come on. Come on. Let's go. You got a problem? Hello? I didn't hear you. Let's go. So fucking shut up. Shut up. Everything's fine, okay? Yeah. You got something Cube? to say? Cube? You got something to say, boy? Cube. Get inside. Let's get back to work. You heard what your master said. Get inside. Boy. You shut the fuck up. Hey, get the fuck back inside. Fanon suggests that white people need black people, but are afraid to let them exist on their own terms due to their irrational ideas about people of color. Wherever we may go, a black man always remains a black man, no matter how hard he tries to be white. They may speak King's English instead of Jive, they may deny their heritage and color to get into positions of power, but they will always be inferior to the white man if they do not change their perception of self and the world around them. 
This could only happen with a shift in the collective unconscious for the better, and Fanon definitely seems positive about it. Just as people anticipate that in 100 years time the Jewish collective unconscious will transform after the trauma of the Holocaust, so will the collective unconscious of black people, albeit at a much slower pace due to the strong anti-black sentiment embedded in European culture. The world seemed not to take interest in Fanon's work when it was first published in 1952, but with his second book The Wretched of the Earth, it garnered wider attention due to cultural upheavals in the US and colonial countries in the 1960s. Although contemporary theorists of cultural studies have preferred Franz Fanon's later culturally and politically revolutionary works such as The Wretched of the Earth, Black Skin White Masks is still considered an important anti-colonial, anti-racist and Afro-pessimist work in Anglophone countries with its psychological and psychiatric insights remaining valid especially as applied by people of diverse colonial and imperial histories, such as the Palestinians in the Middle East, the Tamils in Sri Lanka, and African Americans in the US in their contemporary struggles for cultural and political autonomy. Fanon has had an influence on the works of revolutionary leaders such as Ali Shariadi in Iran, Steve Biko in South Africa, Malcolm X in the United States, and Ernesto Che Guevara in Cuba. Of these, only Guevara focused on Fanon's theories on violence in The Wretched of the Earth, while for Shariadi and Biko, the main interest in Fanon was the new man and black consciousness. With regard to the black power movement, Fanon's work was most influential. His books Black Skin, White Masks and The Wretched of the Earth are often quoted directly by Kwame Touré. Another example is what Fanon called the colonized intellectual, meaning that the native intellectual has clothed his aggressiveness in his desire to assimilate himself to the colonial world. A third example being the idea that African Americans should build new social systems rather than participating in the systems created by the colonialists. Touré suggests that black people should create rather than imitate. The black power group that Fanon had the most influence on was the Black Panther Party. In 1970, Bobby Seale, the chairman of the BPP, included much of his work in their party platform. Their 10-point plan contained six points which either directly or indirectly referenced ideas in Fanon's work, including ideas that there must be an end to the robbery by the white man, and education that teaches the true history and black people's role in present-day society. One of the most important elements adopted by the BPP was the need to build the humanity of the native. Fanon claimed that once the native realizes that they're human, it would mark the beginning of the push for freedom. Fanon's legacy has expanded into black studies, more specifically into theories of Afro-pessimism and black critical theory. Thinkers such as Sylvia Winter, Patrice Douglas, Zakia Imam Jackson, and Salama Wheat Tarifi have taken up Fanon's ontological, phenomenological, and psychoanalytic analysis of the Negro and the zone of non-being in order to develop theories of anti-blackness. Black critical theorists and Afro-pessimists take the ontological implications of the Negro and psychopathology, formulating the black or the slave as the non-relational, phobic object that constitutes civil society. Thank you for sticking with me on the presentation on Fanon's black skin white masks, feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I will try to answer them the best I can. See you around, space cowboys.